If China's leaders could choose one image to symbolize their decade in power, then this might be it. Shanghai's rise as an important financial hub and engine of growth has been dazzling. The city's own building boom has provided jobs for millions of workers, pushing per capita income well above 12,000 US dollars a year. But Shanghai is a symbol of modern China in another important way too. Those who are growing rich here, those who pay two and a half million US dollars for apartments like this one, are acutely aware that the growing wealth gap is leading to resentment and anger. The gap is obviously getting bigger and bigger and um, some poor people, they're trying to make, some, uh, make something out of it, you know, but uh, fortunately we have a very uh, strict and very powerful government and they're trying to control everything, they're trying to uh, calm these people down. But some economists argue that strong government is now part of China's problem. The over-reliance on big infrastructure spending, they say, is stifling innovation and distorting the economy. The government is becoming the problem, not the solution, the big government. Why? Because the government is too powerful, can choose too many resources, it created a lot of distortion. The people uh, is getting a smaller piece of the cake of the GDP. And uh, that's why the Chinese economy is difficult to transform from investment driven to consumption driven, because the people don't have enough real income to consume. <laughs> It's not hard to find people without enough income to consume in Shanghai. Mrs. Lo lives in a tiny one-room apartment and shares a bathroom and kitchen with her neighbors. This city might be a success story, but it's a reminder too of the challenges that lie ahead for the next generation of leaders. John Sudworth, BBC News, Shanghai.